All right, so today I'm going to be sharing some tips to tackle coding assignments. So coding assignments can be very difficult to get started with, and it's very easy to feel overwhelmed or anxious about all the requirements you have to implement. Now, especially if you're new to programming, it can feel like a daunting task where you don't even know where to start or how to even begin to understand what's required of you. But even if you're familiar with programming, there's some tips here that I want to share that is very important to maybe implement or use so that trying to develop software or complete a coding assignment can be much less burdensome and much less challenging. Now, the first tip is modularity. Now, modularity is a concept which is native to computer science and especially software design and software engineering. And it can be illustrated here by both Baldwin and Clark in this quote, where they say, the concept of modularity is used primarily to reduce complexity by breaking a system into varying degrees of interdependence and independence across and hide the complexity of each part behind an abstraction and interface. So now that's a very long quote, but it does highlight the main features we want in modularity, namely reducing complexity, breaking a system down into varying degrees, different parts, individual parts, which are either interdependent, maybe they rely on each other, or they're independent, they're just by itself. And finally, it says behind an abstraction. So we don't want to tackle an entire problem all at once. We want to break it down into simple parts so that we can understand it and manage it as well. Now, how do you actually modularize? Well, the main idea, again, is to break down any complexity that you come across into individual parts so that you can manage and maintain it. So for example, if you have a very long assignment with multiple functions or modules you have to implement, you wanna implement each of those one by one and even further specifying what you have to do and what is required for each one. So it's not all vague or too abstract or too complex for you to understand as a whole. So for example, after you read the specifications or requirements of the assignment, you can start by assigning different functions or requirements to different days or times you want to complete them. You may even want to go further and specify more clear and more detailed descriptions of how you're going to implement each, each function that you plan to write. Now, this is kind of a scheduling or task management kind of component, but this kind of idea does help with how we want to tackle a particular piece of code. Now as a bonus tip, you definitely want to start with functions, classes, or whatever objects you're dealing with, with the least dependency as a general guideline. So those with the least dependency are the ones that do not rely on other parts. So for example, if you think of maybe you want to develop a program that simulates a, a game of chess. You don't want to start off with Im implementing and writing how do you do a game of chess. You want to probably start first by relying on individual parts of that program, say, namely the pieces. What does a pawn do? What does a knight do? What does a rook do? And so on. So there, you can start to build up from individual parts into a more complex program so that you don't run into any problems or dependencies that you'll have to deal with as an issue. So here's an example schedule where you're splitting up and organizing any requirements so that you can minimize the complexity of solving a problem. So let's say for example, you have a weekly assignment and here starting on Monday, you're given the assignment. So here you can begin with reading specifications and just creating the files. So you're not even coding at all yet. Here, you just have a very simple task of reading the requirements, the directions, the instructions, and then just simply creating what files you're gonna need down the line and maybe any starter code 
that is given to you. So here it's a very small task that you have to do. You don't have to do anything complex yet, nothing overwhelming, just simply setting up good foundations throughout the week so that the task is easier to break down and manage. So let's say over the next couple days, you're actually writing the bulk of the code. So let's say on Tuesday, you want to implement the first three out of five functions of your assignment. So here you maybe can organize it by interdependency, how independent are the functions, or maybe what are the simplest. And finally, you want to test the code of those three functions so that you can drive your development with tests and you don't have any long-standing issues in the end as you integrate different functions together. Now Wednesday is just a similar day where you just finish the remaining functions and you continue to test that code as well. And so now we reach Thursday where maybe you want to clean up and refactor that code. Is there code that's repeated that could be used or changed out with another function? Can you clean up some of the code and make it more simpler and more efficient? And finally, you also want to comment and add clear and useful documentation so that whoever is reading your code, whether it's someone grading it or someone using it, they can see something that's insightful so they can understand exactly what's going on. A Friday, let's say that's when you have to submit the assignment. And there you can see we broke down this entire task. Say you have to implement this whole thing across a span of several days, several tasks, and we broke down the complexity so it's minimized the difficulty. We can change it down just a little bit and as much as we can. So finally, I want to talk about another concept, which is pseudocode. Now, this concept may seem very simple and almost very simplistic, but pseudocode is actually a very powerful way of starting and implementing any code that you want to write in the future. Now, the best way to illustrate pseudocode is to go through by a coding demonstration. So let's take this example, indices divisible by three, which is a function in Python where it returns a list containing every element in its sole argument, a matrix that has indices whose sum is divisible by three. So let's say we're in Python and we define a function. We want to start off with the signature indices divisible by three. And we only have one argument, which is a matrix. Now the next part is a crucial part in understanding how to use pseudocode to your advantage. Now, as in the name pseudocode, fake code, we're not going to be writing any code. We're just going to be writing what we want to implement and how it's going to be structured and how it's going to be functioning in the end. And the way to write out pseudocode is with comments. So here, the first thing what we want to do is initialize our list. We're going to be returning a list of values. So in the beginning, it would be helpful to create a list that we're going to use for storing data. So next, we want to go through the matrix. And first, we want to traverse by the matrix rows. Now, specifically, we want to traverse by index because it's the indices that we care about. When we're traversing through a matrix, by default, it's gonna be going through the rows. Next, we wanna traverse by the matrix columns, which are by index. Now here, we indented our pseudocode because we know that we have a structure where each row is gonna have its own set of columns. We're not gonna be traversing through rows and through columns separately, we care about the individual pair of row and columns. So that's why we have it uh, indented here. And this is gonna be foreshadowing later when we actually implement and write the code, how is our code actually designed and structured in a functioning manner. And so if we reach a certain row and certain column by index, we wanna check if those indices are divisible by three. Again, we want to index because we're underneath that traversal. And if we pass that, then we should append that value to our list. And finally, we're going to be returning that list. So now we have the basic overall structure of our function of our little part of our program 
in pseudocode and in here in Python comments. So the next step is to just simply implement each requirement that is illustrated in pseudocode. So from the top, if we want to initialize our list, we just write that in Python where we create an empty list. Next, we want to traverse the matrix rows by index. And so we just convert that and translate that from pseudocode into Python, which would be a for loop. We do it by index, so it's in range for the length of the matrix. And we do the next thing by columns in Python. And here we have the bracket zero because we do the first element of a matrix, which is by a row. And so the length of the row will give us columns. And so that's why we can traverse there. And here we just translate that again into Python where the sum of the indices, if it's remainder of, after the division of three is equal to zero, then it should pass our condition. So if that were the case, we get the specific index of the row and column of that matrix, and then we get the element and we append that to our list result. And finally, we just return our result. So this is the overall function that's implemented and may seem weird how we went through all of that. But the main idea I want to get across is that here we were able to break down this complex task of trying to return a list of indices divisible by three into individual parts, individual comments that are shown and illustrated in pseudocode. And even if you don't implement pseudocode one by one and translate it into whatever language you're using, it is still helpful to get you to think about the overall structure and behavior of whatever piece of software or function that you're dealing with. So just to wrap up, as an important reminder, these tips don't necessarily make your assignments or your tasks easy. It's still going to be difficult and challenging to go about and try and test your code, trying to know what all the requirements are, make sure not, make sure that not everything is broken. However, it may help make it much easier, which is just what I want to share today. Again, I highly recommend you reviewing any of these tips if they're helpful for you or what are tips that are helpful to you, please let me know down below. So if you're new to this channel, thank you for watching. My name is Cedric. If you're interested in videos more like this about tips and tricks, please let me know down below. But anyways, I do want to just say thank you for watching.